la 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 town of Derbyshire lies in the southeast corner of the Peak District and is located on a sharp bend in the River Derwent. There are actually five parts to Matlock. Matlock Town, Matlock Green, Matlock Bridge, Matlock Bank and Matlock Bath. This is my apartment within this old converted mill. The mill is a Grade 2 listed building, but it's um, it was converted into flats, I think about four to five years ago. There are 24 apartments within this mill, and I live in one of them. And I'm really happy here. It's a lovely, lovely flat as you can see. Come and have a look at this for a bedroom then. This has got to be the cosiest bedroom I've ever slept in. But you know what really makes it for me? Just look at the view at the window. This mill is situated about a mile, if that, from the centre of Matlock, so it's great because this is quite a rural location and it's quiet, you can hear a pin drop, but yet it's 15 minutes walk into Crown Square in Matlock, it's great, so I've got everything I need, I've got the best of both worlds here really. Hawley's Park is right in the centre of town and provides many recreational facilities including tennis, miniature golf, a miniature railway, a bike and skateboard park, a boating lake and a paddling pool for kids. Its lovely setting also provides a wonderful escape from the hustle and bustle of Matlock's busy streets.
My main passion in life is making music. And as a boy, I learned to play the electronic organ. Now, I have to say, I was pretty damn good. If I wanted to lay claim to any talent that I have, making music on the organ would be it. When I was having lessons, I was mainly playing from sheet music books. Uh, but as time went on, and over the years, I developed more and um, created my own music. I recently bought this professional keyboard because I'm so passionate about my music. So during the rainy days and nights, it keeps me out of mischief. Now most of the songs that I've composed, I always associate with people I've known or places I've visited. 22 years ago, I composed a few new tunes when I made my very first visit here to the Peak District. Now, since I've been living in the area, I've taken it upon myself to make a slightly newer version of one of those songs. La 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 In the mid-19th century, when Matlock was developing as a spa town, many hydros, or more correctly, hydropathic establishments, were being built. The last major hydro to survive was John Smedley's, which finally closed its doors in 1955. It was built by Smedley, and now it is the headquarters for Derbyshire County Council. <laughs> In 2001, I applied for a job in Derbyshire County Council in the headquarters based in Matlock. And to my utter delight, I was offered an interview. I thought, wow, I've got an interview for a job in the Peak District. If I was lucky enough to get the job, I knew I was able to be able to live in the area. So, with that exciting thought in my mind, 
I prepared long and hard for the interview. I made the 150 mile journey to Matlock, and I thought I actually prepared pretty well on the interview. Sadly, I wasn't appointed the job. Oh, say lovey. In early to mid-2002, two more jobs in Derbyshire County Council came up. But again, I wasn't successful in, in getting the jobs. So by that time I was getting a bit disillusioned. Oh well, one of those things. John Smedley also built Ryber Castle, which dominates the skyline just south of the town. The castle's huge structure cost him £60,000, but now sadly it's nothing more than an empty shell. Giles Church stands on a hill overlooking the town, with some fine views of the Derwent Valley, Ryber Castle and the town below. It has a pert west tower with diagonal buttresses, but the rest was rebuilt in the 19th century. It contains a Norman font, some fine stained glass windows and memorials to the Woolley family, who lived at Old Ryber Hall. Understandably, I was becoming a bit disillusioned by the fact that I'd been for three job interviews but had not been successful in any of them. It was also the fact that I'd made a 300 mile round trip to Matlock when I attended those interviews. However, I wasn't going to be beaten, so when a fourth job came up in Derbyshire County Council in late 2002, I applied for that one as well. And this time I was successful. Yes! I was really excited. When I was offered the job by my new employers, as soon as I came off the phone to them, I rang up my mother straight away and said, Mum, I've got the job. I'm going to be moving to the Peak District. Yeah. She was excited for me as well because she knew it was an area that I was particularly keen on moving to. So, the reality of it all was starting to sink in. It was actually going to be happening this time. It wasn't just a dream. I really was going to be living in the area. So, the next stage I did was to actually look for, for places to live. I went onto the internet and looked at accommodation to rent. Um, I started looking at Buxton and Bakewell, because they, they were places that I remembered from my first visit to the Peak District. And I liked them both very much, and I could see myself living in either of those towns. However, they were quite some way from Matlock. I mean, Buxton was 20 miles from Matlock, and Bakewell, well, it was only 8 miles from Matlock, but I suddenly thought, well, it's probably better to actually look for somewhere in Matlock itself, because that's where I'm going to be working. I didn't go to Matlock on my first visit to the Peak District, um, but I did make one brief visit there um, on another visit, but it wasn't a place I remember particularly well. However, when I was going for the four interviews in Matlock, 
you know, I had a bit of a walk around whilst I was there, and um, it was a beautiful place. Um, so I, I could quite happily see myself living here. So Matlock was where I started to set my sights on to find somewhere to live. High Tor is a towering limestone crag with impressive views over Matlock Bath and the Heights of Abraham on the hill opposite. Now this cliff edge is totally unfenced, so even those with a good head for heights are likely to find this cliff drop unnerving as I do. As a result of my research on the internet, I found this small stone cottage to rent in Matlock, which was literally two minutes walk from Derbyshire County headquarters where I'd be working. <laughs> How cool was that? Just think I could stay in bed till 25 past eight in the morning, roll out, and then be at work for half past eight. Anyway, the cottage, despite being old and it needing some work done on it, it was really quaint and it had some lovely views over Matlock and the surrounding hills and dales. The day I moved in, there was snow on the hills opposite and it just looked amazing. I just thought, wow, what a place I'm living in. No regrets at all. It was a far cry from the basement flat in the big city from where I'd moved, where the only view I got was the scruffy front yard below the pavement of the busy main street outside. <laughs> Matlock Bath is the main attraction for this area. The A6 becomes absolutely choked with cars on sunny bank holidays, but it is motorbikes which dominate the scene. If you walk along the main street on a Sunday afternoon, you will see nothing but motorbikes all the way along the parking base, with all the bikers admiring each other's bikes. Not surprisingly there is much to see, so visitors should allow plenty of time and a full wand. And Matlock Bath is known to some of the local people as Blackpool of the Peak District, as it is rather like a seaside resort. The main road is littered with tacky gift shops, amusement arcades, cafes, chippers, the only thing is missing is the sea. In 1984, the most spectacular addition to Matlock Bath was opened. You can take a cable car up to the heights of Abraham, from where you can get really spectacular views of the Derwent Valley.
the first people in Matlock that I met were my work colleagues. I joined a team of eight people, which at the time was located in a very small building all on its own, away from the main block of the County Council. Now, bearing in mind that I've been used to working in open planned offices before, where there were lots of people around, constantly coming and going, I found this quite hard in the beginning, because I just wasn't meeting anybody outside my own team. I got to know my immediate colleagues very quickly, but anybody outside of that team, I just wasn't meeting anybody. I was liaising with other people in the council, but that was just by phone or by email. I just wasn't having any face-to-face -face contact with anybody else. So, for a, quite a while, when I was working in that little office, I did feel very isolated. During the Industrial Revolution, Richard Arkwright built the first water-powered cotton mills and pioneered the factory system. Cromford developed around these mills into a purpose-built industrial community. Pubs have always been an interest of mine, and there's nothing I like more than a pint of real ale. So during my first week in Matlock, I decided to explore some of the local ale houses. This was before I was actually realising that I wasn't meeting that many people through work, so I thought, well, if I go to the local pubs, you know, that would be another option to meet new people. During that first week, I think I probably managed to get round nearly all the pubs in Matlock. Some of them were quite nice, one or two really nice, uh, one or two were really shite. But then eventually I found a couple of pubs which would end up becoming my regular stops. The Duke of Wellington was the first pub that made an impression on me. I went in there on my first Saturday in Matlock and was welcomed by a very friendly lady working behind the bar called Josie. She asked me if I was waiting for someone or if I was just having a quiet pint. I then proudly told her that I was a new resident of Matlock. As I was standing by the bar, I got talking to one or two other people who were locals. So I felt very welcome. So during the next couple of weeks or so, I found that I was going into the Duke nearly every night and um, I got talking to people for a while and I found it was a very good place for doing that. You could walk in very easily by yourself and just get talking to someone even if you don't really know them. It was that kind of a place. So I felt very comfortable after a while and eventually um, that's where I met my friends in that lock. So in just a short space of time, I got to know a lot of people in that lock. Well of course now that I was living in the Peak District, I just had to get out and do some walking in the area. And this was one of the first spots I came to for a walk just after I moved to Matlock. Here on Stanton Moor, there are a large number of these blocks of granite. 
They are the harder rock that has remained as the plateau has been worn down through the ages. Corkstone is 15 feet high and has iron footrests driven into it. It is also covered in graffiti accumulated over many years. prehistoric remains on Stanton Wall, but the Nine Ladies is probably the best known. It is 33 feet in diameter and its name is based on a legend where people were turned into stone for dancing and making music on the Sabbath. After having lived in Matlock for a couple of months or so, everything that was happening in my life at the time was starting to sink in and I actually became quite depressed. I had moved to a completely new area which was a long long way away from any other place I'd ever previously lived. I didn't know anyone so I felt like a bit like a stranger in a lost land. It was a weird feeling. And of course on top of that, I'd started a brand new job. I wasn't happy in my new job. And that was mainly because people weren't particularly communicative towards me. People made my life a misery, albeit unintentional. But it did make me feel very unwelcome. I think a lot of that to do is the fact that my line manager had a lot going on in his own life at the time. So he was very preoccupied and didn't have any time for me. So he ended up dumping me on another colleague, leaving her to show me the ropes and give me work to do. Now this particular colleague had her own work to do um, and she hardly spoke to me at all. I mean I remember sitting there the first couple of days twiddling my thumbs and I just felt like a real gooseberry and a couple of times I sort of asked her, I said if there's something you want me to do for you or help you with please please say and, and usually the response I got was mmm without her even looking up so I really did feel very unwelcome I got to the stage to be honest where I dreaded going into work I felt very alienated and alone. Winster has charm and character with a gracefully wide main street. Steep little alleyways run up from the main street and the village has bulged out up the hillside. Winster was once a lead mining centre and market town and has many 18th century buildings. Market House is a delightful building consisting of stone arches and an upper storey of brick and stone dressing. Winster men used to work at the Mill Close Mine, one of the most productive lead mines in the world and the largest in the Peak District. It was worked for hundreds of years, but then in 1938, with no new ore and the price of lead falling, the mine was closed down.
up on the limestone plateau, there are some stunning views from this small village. Elton developed from lead mining and agriculture, and both are still very much in evidence. Mining may have gone, although the area is still st steeped in remnants of the industry, but agriculture is still very much active. Elton is a slightly quirky village. Up to a few years ago, it had its own fire brigade, but it had to be disbanded because the volunteers became too old. that looks like a large house, giving the rocky outcrop its alternate name, Mock Beggars Hall. Ash Trees is an unspoilt little village clustered around the village green, its main preoccupation being farming and tourism. But it was an important lead mining centre from the medieval times to the 19th century and had its own bar moat court. The village lies at the head of Lathkill Dale and is therefore very busy with walkers and hikers at weekends since it is a very good base for exploring the surrounding area. There is a pub, the Bull's Head, where the Bar Moat Court still meets twice yearly. Next door to the Bull's Head, there is a popular cafe. Moniash also has annual well dressings, held at the end of May. Magpie Mine was worked extensively for 300 years, up until 1924. It was always a problematic lead mine with repeated openings and closures. Flooding was a constant problem. Magpie Mine with its 728 foot shaft was eventually taken over in 1962 by the Peak District Historical Society as a field centre. It is now the most complete and interesting remains of a lead mine in the Peak District. is about three miles west of Bakewell, just off the A6, consists mainly of stone-built cottages and farms, built in the 18th century. The village also has a church and a pub. The village pub called the Cock and Pullet was built from scratch in 1995, next to a former public house called the Devonshire Arms, which had been closed some 20 odd years earlier. Apart from being a free house, the pub also offers accommodation.
Ashford in the Water is a sleepy little village lying beside the River Wye. It has a long history, and from the Iron Age or before, was one of the major crossing points on the Wye. The bridges across the river are major features of Ashford. Sheepwash Bridge dates from the 17th century, and there is a pen next to it which was used for washing sheep, and it was a practice that was actually used up until quite recently. Ashford has an annual well dressing, which is held during Pentecost, six weeks after Easter. The village also has a shop, a pub, and a couple of hotels. For a very short time but I thought to myself well hey come on let's 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 be realistic about this it's bound to feel weird for a while because you know here I am a bloke all on my own having moved to a completely new area meeting new people so you know I've got to accept that it's bound to feel strange for a while so I thought well let's stick with it just just stick with it and see how it goes so I did I, I stuck with it and after a few more months, the situation improved and um, I got over the problems that I had in work. Um, people in my team started to accept me more, um, so I, I wasn't feeling quite so much of an outsider. Uh, I think the situation improved also when our team relocated into another office. And this office was actually within the main building of county offices in Matlock. So it was an open plan office. Um, so we were surrounded by other teams as well. So I was meeting a lot more people by that time, uh, which was much more my cup of tea. And um, that sort of feeling of depression and alienation and feeling alone eventually disappeared. The other pub which made an impression on me was the Thorn Tree. Now this for me is undoubtedly the nicest pub in Matlock. Although it's quite small, it's very cosy, it's very friendly, the beer is first class and it's got a patio out the front from where you can get wonderful views over Matlock and the surrounding hills and dales. <laughs> places I've ever lived, it is definitely the most scenic. It's also somewhere that I can honestly say where I feel I belong. The last five years has absolutely flown by, but in many ways it feels like I've lived here a lot longer than that. As I said, it was a slow start and I did feel very depressed, but it paid off in the end and I've met some lovely people here. I've got some good new friends, and I just live in some fantastic countryside. I am proud to be a resident in the Peak District. I certainly intend to stay living in this area. Whether I'll stay specifically in Mattel remains to be seen, but my intention certainly is to stay in the Peak District. <laughs> 